Storyteller TV. Classic children's stories from around the world. Dot and the Kangaroo. Part two. Dot and the Hunters. Goodbye, Kookaburra, called Dot, as she and the Kangaroo set off in search of the platypus. All the other animals said he could help Dot find her way home. I've never seen a platypus, said Dot. As they passed along the bottom of a deep gully, what's he like? Oh, he's all right, really," said the kangaroo. "But he's such a weird creature. The animals say he's a bird, and the birds say he's an animal or a fish. He's left alone by everyone, except the humans. They're always writing books about him. After a while, they came to a shady pool. The kangaroo hopped to the edge of the water and made little grunting noises, and soon Dot could see something black on the surface of the water. It was the bill of the strangest creature she'd ever seen, small and furry, but with webbed feet like a duck. The kangaroo licked a spot of dirt off Dot's forehead and said, "Now be very careful what you say to him." I am the Ornithorhynchus Paradoxus," said the platypus to Dot. "Are you going to write a book about me too?、Oh, humans, you come out here, dig up my home, and think you can write books about me? Me, whose ancestors have been in the world for millions of years?" Dot tried to explain about losing her way, but the platypus looked bored. At last, she burst out. Well, someone must know where it is.、Oh, of course," said the platypus, yawning. "You simply have to ask the wagtail." "Oh, thank you!" cried Dot. "How clever you are, platypus!" "I told you, my name is Ornithorhynchus Paradoxus," and he swept back to the pool. So. We must find Willy Wagtail," said the kangaroo. "Hop in and let's get going." All day they searched, bounding through the bush. But although many creatures had seen him or heard his rattling, chattering song, clickety clack, clickety clack, he had always flown off just before the kangaroo arrived. So after a drink at a waterhole, she found them a cosy shelter in the rocks where they could curl up for the night. As Dot lay by the kangaroo, she thought sadly of her parents looking for her. They wouldn't know how well she was being looked after by her friends. The stars peeped through, and Dot tried to count them. Suddenly, she opened her eyes. The moon was high, and the kangaroo was sniffing the air. <coughs> through the trees came the sound of steady drumming. What is it? She asked. <laughs> Aborigines, whispered the kangaroo. We must get away. But they won't hurt us, will they? Said Dot, who longed to see a human face again. I'd love to see the dancing. If they see us, they'll hunt us with their dogs and kill us. Replied the kangaroo. But if you must see them, follow me, and be very. Very quiet. They hopped through the bushes, closer and closer to the noise. Inside the pouch, Dot could feel her friend trembling. Soon they could see men dancing, their bodies painted red and white. Others squatted on the ground, beating boomerangs and spears together or clapping. All of them chanted a strange wailing song, 
while the campfire lit up their faces with a horrid red glow. Oh, I'm frightened, Dot whispered. Why do humans aren't like that? All humans are the same underneath, said the kangaroo. They all kill us. Look, the dance is about killing kangaroos. One of the dancers is pretending to be a kangaroo and the other is pretending to hunt him. Dot gave a shiver and whispered, oh, I wish I wasn't a human. The gentle animal patted her. Oh, there are a few good humans, she said. If you never wear kangaroo skin boots and never, never eat kangaroo soup, you could grow up to be one. Oh, I never will, Dot promised. They were so busy whispering that they quite forgot to watch for the Aborigine dogs. The dingoes prowling the camp suddenly scented the kangaroo and barked. The singing stopped. The voices began shouting. The kangaroo grabbed Dot and took several enormous bounds. She seemed to fly through the night. But the snarling dogs and yelling Aborigines were all chasing her now. Poor Dot was terrified. The moon was bright and the huntsman could easily see the leaping kangaroo. She put such power into every leap that she began to gasp for breath. Oh, kangaroo, Dot cried. Put me down. Without me, you might get away. <sighs> Never again, panted the brave animal. That's how I lost my little Joey. Suddenly, she came to a halt. She was perched on a rock. Ahead was a deep black gully, a great chasm in the earth. Far behind them, Dot could see the hunters. But one dog was closer than the rest, its sharp teeth gleaming in the moonlight. The kangaroo quickly lifted the girl out of her pouch and hopped forward to face the dog. She stood straight and tall and opened her little arms wide. With a terrible snarl, the dog sprang at the kangaroo's throat. But she seized it in her two black hands, kicked out with one of her powerful hind legs, and when she threw the dog to the ground, it was dead. But the other hunters were getting closer. The only chance was to leap the chasm. The kangaroo picked up Dot, put her back in her pouch, and leapt towards the fearful gulf. Again Dot cried, Oh, darling kangaroo, leave me here and save yourself. But she heard only the whistling of the wind. Then came the great spring. Dot held her breath and they flew through the air. <coughs> yes, they had just reached the other side. No, the kangaroo was slipping back into the gully. She fought for a foothold, found it, staggered forward, then fell, exhausted, on her face. In an instant, Dot was out of the pouch and had her arms round the poor animal's neck. Oh, don't die, dear kangaroo. Oh, please don't die, she cried, burying her face in the grey fur. But the kangaroo lay gasping. Suddenly, she heard a rude voice behind her. Well, why don't you give friend kangaroo some water? Huh? What fools humans are. Dot turned and saw a little brown bird on long legs. But there is no water. Ah, booby, sneered the bittern. It's under you. Just make a hole in the grass. Dot dug her hands into the grass and moss and made a little hole. At once, beautiful, clear water welled up in it. She scooped it up and splashed it over the kangaroo's panting tongue and matted fur. To her delight, the brown eyes opened and she knew that her good friend wasn't going to die. 
You were very kind to tell me about the water, Dot said to the bittern. But although the bird was very pleased to hear this, it was always so rude that it only pulled a face and said, Yeah! When it had gone a few steps, it turned. Hey, stupid! You'll find a dry cave beyond that gum tree. It's quite good enough for kangaroos and silly little humans. Thank you, thank you, called Dot as she helped the kangaroo to her feet. How lucky she was to have found such friends in the bush. Soon she'd find Willy Wagtail too, and he'd help her find her way home. When I grow up, she thought, I'll never let anyone hurt these friends of mine in the bush.